I bought my first set of dice out of necessity. The second, for convenience. The third, just for the color. And by the tenth set, I was addicted. But now I'm lost. In this arcane habit. Lost to loved ones. Lost from how I used to be. For what happens when your dreams become polyhedral and the hope of salvation lies in a new set. The dice must blow. Hey everybody, this is Geek Warrior. 77. And this is a video about dice, if you picked that up from that ridiculous intro. I do have a dice problem, I will not deny that. And this video is about a dice box, dice chest, dice holder, rolling tray piece that I commissioned to accommodate my gaming needs. So let's check it out. So let's start with what my standard setup would be. Handbook, notebook, character sheet. And then the, the subject of the video, the dice. Big, messy pile of dice. So this is uh, a reenactment, but it's accurate. This is what I do, or would do. Make everyone at the table wait. Roll the dice, dude. Dude, come on, let's go. Look at this guy. Are we playing or not? It doesn't... And once we are ready to go, it was just a matter of time before... Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> oh, whoop. Hey man, that's cool. Accidents happen. But internally, I'm like... So not only was I annoyed with the tabletop organization aspect of my dice, but I also didn't like how I was getting them to the session. Started out with the velvet little satchel, and then as I got more dice, I moved on to the classy Ziploc bag. And finally, there was the noisy mason jar with the dice in it that uh, had a distinctive sound everywhere I went. Ho, ho, ho. Looking for something that would let me rotate through my, my collection, uh, transport it safely, and organize it when I was playing. So I contacted Hal Zuccotti on Etsy. He's a maker of high-end tabletop accessories like dice towers, rolling trays, exotic metal dice, uh, heroin, for lack of a better term, straight heroin. Anyway, on his page he had a request a custom order button that caught my eye. So I drew up a basic design and sent it out to him. He replied with a 3D proof and suggested some improvements to my design, uh, the biggest being the lid slash rolling tray. So I agreed to the plans, he quoted me $75, and in about a week it showed up. Ironically, the day that it did show up, I didn't have any dice to put in it. I was trading with someone and left my whole collection in my wife's car. So I decided to see what else would fit in this while I waited for my wife to get home from work. Its unique design could accommodate many things of different shape and size. I'm talking about things like celery, jelly beans, magic beans, even confidential information. Bananas, right? <laughs> All right, enough of that. The idea was for the organizer, a piece of wood, six rows milled into it. Each row would hold six die. I do not use the D100, so I didn't accommodate it in the design. Ooh, hang on. Let me get this. There you go. <laughs> to keep the rolling tray attached to the organizer, uh, there were magnets embedded into the wood. And believe me, these are no weak magnets. These, these are battle magnets. They would strike fear into the hearts of my, my dogs. Well, most of them. 
So powerful, in fact, were those magnets that I could be in a crowded parking lot. I forgot where I parked. And I could hold up one half of the dice holder and it would pull me towards the car. Oh yeah, by the way, that's Balsa Broom, the greatest car ever. Anyway, back to it. On the inside where the stock was removed, you can see there's mill marks still in there, giving it sort of a rough appearance. This is in no way a shortcoming in the commission, as I wanted to finish the inside myself. Um, I went with red felt. I thought it looked good on the walnut. I cut it into pieces of the appropriate size. I uh, used rubber cement, but not as a contact adhesive. I just sort of painted it in there, then pressed the felt in there while it was still wet. It has worked out fine, um, and it's not 100% permanent. I could pull that felt out down the road if I chose and wanted to put a different material in there, like cork or leather or something like that. Once I got the felt in there, you could really see it was a good contrast between the walnut and the red felt. Honestly, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, out with the old and in with the new, let's get this thing on the table. Even with the felt lining, there was still enough clearance for the die to roll free when all closed up. So I ended up making a cork sort of insert to hold everything in place while transporting it and that's worked out pretty well. Another unforeseen perk uh, with this organizer and tray is when they're flat on the table, the battle magnets will actually pull the whole thing into sort of a cohesive unit. I should also mention that I have abandoned the classic character sheet and notebook. Um, I've replaced it with an iPad and an app. It's a uh, Lion's Den Fight Club 5, I think. Um, I've really been happy with that. Cuts down on all the stuff I gotta take over. And here's some obligatory rolling footage. The felt did a good job of receiving the die, not letting them bounce too much. If you rolled within reason, it would stay in the tray. If you rolled like a maniac, it would bounce out. Obviously. And of course, saving the best for last, shutting down those rowdy rollers at my table. Ha 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 ha! Deny! Alright, it's time to wrap things up and get out of here. The next session awaits. If you want to check out Hal Zuccotti's page, I'll put the link below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care.